I want to start this video by just saying thank you to everyone who has been watching and supporting. It has been absolutely awesome. And it just feels amazing to wake up in the morning and know that I have more subscribers than Angular has stars on GitHub. All right, the first question is from Nathan Acosta. What are your thoughts on competitive programming? Given what I've said about coding interviews, it may surprise some of you that I actually kind of like competitive programming. It combines two things that I enjoy, which is algorithms and competing. And for maybe about a month or so, I just kind of grinded problems trying to get better at it. And I really enjoyed the first half of that month and it was very fun for me, but it got to a point where I saw what I needed to do to get better, but I was not interested in actually doing that thing. The problems, how you solve them, it became knowing like these rare math properties and these rare algorithms and things got more and more niche and I was just getting less and less interested as that kind of as I got better at it. And so I kind of just decided to drop it and just not do it seriously and just kind of I don't practice it at all now and it's not really something that I'm interested in doing. Stephen Bishop asks, how do I stop relying on tutorials? I have two things to say if you find yourself just doing tutorial after tutorial. Number one, try not to be learning like five different technologies at once. It's really hard to learn React, but it's even harder to learn React when you're also learning GraphQL and TypeScript and Node.js all at the same time. Now, once you actually get kind of good at React, then yes, it's good to watch, say, a tutorial that combines those things together at a more intermediate level to learn how they work together. But before that, you need to like isolate these things one at a time. Secondly, once you have narrowed in on a single technology, you need to build some sort of project with that technology. And ideally, it's something useful for yourself or for a friend you know. And then what you do is you start building on it until you get stuck. And once you get stuck, you either go watch a tut on how to get past that or you Google something and then you rinse and repeat until you've actually built something for yourself. And that is how you get out of the loop of just doing tuts. Hafizir Rahman asks, should I learn vanilla JS before learn any framework? My take on this is you should learn to program first and then try learning a framework. It's gonna be very hard to learn React before you even know what a variable is. Now, with that said, do I think it's worth learning how to just use vanilla JS to build an entire website and use like document.query and you're using selectors and stuff? No, I don't think that is super useful if your end goal is learning React. I'm about to throw something crazy at you that I actually don't even think is that insane if a beginner wanted to do it, but you start with a Java class to learn the fundamentals of programming, and then you go to the Learn X and Y website to learn the JavaScript syntax in 10 minutes, and then you just plunge straight into React and you're good to go. Jayawad asks, how on earth should I get started with authentication? First off, authentication is just freaking hard to learn. It took me like months just pounding my head against the wall until it finally clicked and I tried like a bajillion different ways. So don't get discouraged if it's really hard at first. And what I will say to make it easier for you is make sure you start with session instead of JWTs. JWTs are nice, but they are more complex. So I would start with sessions. You can look up my name. You'll probably find some videos on it and that should be better. Josie Diaz asks, are you planning on traveling? Nah, not really. And it's not really Corona, although that is kind of a deterrent right now. I just don't like flying in airplanes that much. I'm not really horizontally very large, but I'm close-ish to six foot. And uh, I know there's gonna be some guys in the comments that's like six, seven. He's gonna be like, bruh, six is nothing. But I kind of have long-ish legs and it's just so cramped in airplanes, so annoying. I hate sitting for that long. I can't do it. I need to pace, I need to move around and it's just super annoying. I don't enjoy it that much. And so like flying for work to do like a conference thing is just not my cup of tea at all. I don't mind it if I'm going to stay like in a country for like a week or two with some friends. That's nice. But other than that, no, nah, not really. Lewis Minilaws asks, when you aren't programming, what are you most likely doing? It used to be me lifting weights, but uh, thanks to Corona, it's kind of become a relic of the past. I've tried replacing it with running, but it's just not the same at all. And uh, other than that, just kind of trying out some chess. Nick Papas asks, would you rather sell your soul and be fang sexual for two years or spend 60 days in jail? Maybe I didn't really portray my feelings very well, but I actually wouldn't like be super upset if I had to work at a fang company. As long as they didn't get, say, a Angular project, in which case, well, jail is looking pretty nice. Cristianto Cassidy asks, what backend framework should I learn? I use Node.js, and I'll tell you why. It's a very simple reason. 
I build websites, and for websites, you have to use JavaScript. Well, you don't have to, but you know, it happens. So if I'm using JavaScript for the website, it's very convenient to also be able to use JavaScript, well, more specifically TypeScript, because JavaScript's annoying. But I can use TypeScript for the back end in Node.js and also TypeScript on the front end. And so one, I can share code, and two, I can also use code that other people have made, third-party dependencies across both of these. And that's very nice, saves a lot of time. Also, it's just nice not having to switch contexts. So I'm not like having to like switch tooling and switch languages as I'm going between them. So as a full stack developer, it's very nice to toggle between those two things. But if I don't care about that, then yeah, Node.js is definitely not what I would pick. Like if you were just a backend engineer and you don't care about the front end, then maybe it doesn't make sense to do Node.js and TypeScript. It may make sense to do something else. But that's why I like Node.js and that's what I would recommend if you are interested in web dev in general. We have a beefcake of a question here from Taluga Game Boy. He says, I've been working on a SaaS product and started a YouTube channel to log the process. Eventually, it was too hard to do both while working on a full-time job, so I took a break from YouTube just to focus on the product. If you started from scratch today, what would you do differently with building your SaaS app in terms of tech, business, YouTube? What would you keep the same? Does having a YouTube channel help you grow your user base? Just for some context, Saffron is the SaaS app that I've been working on kind of full-time-ish for the last few months. And it is a cooking app that I built with my mom. So that is what I'm referring to when I talk about this next bit. So to start off, let's talk about the tech for that. I'll just pull up a tweet that I made a little while ago with all the technologies that I used for that and that I would be happy using in the future. Let's talk about the business aspects now. Does having a YouTube channel help you grow, say, a business or a user base? And in general, I would say the answer is yes. But in my case for Saffron, it hasn't really made a significant difference. And the main reason for that is my YouTube channel and Saffron, they're not very harmonious together. What I mean by that is if you were to draw, say, a Venn diagram of what Saffron's like target audience would be and what my YouTube audience is, there would be very, very little overlap. Like Saffron's target audience is kind of hardcore-ish cooks, or at least the type of person that's gonna see value out of Saffron or enough value to want to purchase it and become a customer is someone who cooks a lot. And there are developers that cook a lot, but there's very few that are interested enough in cooking to want to pay for a cooking product. Words are wind, so let me give you some hard numbers. We have a little over 20 paying customers for Saffron, and I would say maybe like five of them came from YouTube. So if that was you, thank you, I do appreciate it. But as you can see, it's not like a crazy number of them came from YouTube. I do think the number would be a lot higher if I did content around cooking, but that's kind of my other problem, is I like cooking, but I'm not necessarily passionate enough about it to want to make content on it. I'm currently kind of caught in this cycle where I feel guilty just kind of programming on Saffron and I feel like I'm not doing enough to grow it and do the business side of things. And so I promise myself, I'm like, Ben, you are going to be doing some marketing stuff this week and you're going to grow it. And I try that and I get started, like say doing some content or doing some things that I think would bring in business. But then I just kind of get bored doing that and I go back to programming and then I feel guilty. I'm just kind of in the cycle where nothing really gets anywhere. At least the programming part gets places, <laughs> but uh, not the growing part. I am contemplating kind of switching my mindset on this. I've had kind of the ambitions for the last few months and why I've been working on it so much to turn it into a business that financially supports me. But I think I may switch the mindset of more of a side project approach where I just kind of work on it for fun and don't expect, say, financial gain from it. And the reason why I say that is, one, I still think it has a lot of potential and why I have been working on it. And the reason I know this is because we have found people that click with it and really enjoy it. And so I know if I find more people like that, it will be successful. But the problem is I don't enjoy the process of actually finding those people and growing it, it's just not where I am passionate in. So basically there are two things I would do if I was you. Make sure that your YouTube channel or your content that you're creating in your business are in harmony, which I'm gonna assume you're already kind of there and they're kind of in the same niche-ish. 
Uh, and then after that, I would say instead of focusing on building the product first, I think it is better to focus on building the audience first because once you have an audience, you just have way more options to choose from. Zayek Lambda asks, what books are you reading right now? I'm currently listening to The Blade Itself on audiobook. Brino asks, are you single? Well, Brino, it depends who's asking. You know what I mean? All right, that is the end of this video. Make sure to smash that unstar button on Angular's GitHub repo.